The Life and Sad Ending of Billy Joel Billy Joel was born William Martin Joel on May 9, 1949, in the Bronx, New York, USA, to Howard, a German-Jewish Holocaust survivor and an accomplished pianist, and his wife Rosalind Nyman. Soon after his birth, his family moved to the Levitt Homes section of Hicksville in Long Island where he spent his childhood. In 1953, he began attending piano classes and demonstrated an aptitude for playing the instrument. He was taught by the noted American pianist Morton Estrin and musician-songwriter Timothy Ford. In 1963, he joined his first band, The Echoes, which later came to be known as The Lost Souls. He recorded several of his instrumental pieces with the band. During this time, he left high school to pursue a career in music. In 1967, he left The Lost Souls to join a new band called The Hassles. It was a Long Island group that had signed with United Artists Record. The band released their first album, The Hassles, and subsequently released their second album, Hour of the Wolf, the next year. Both the albums were commercial failures. In 1969, he left the band along with the band's drummer Joe Small and formed a heavy metal duo with him named Attila. They recorded an album with Epic Records and debuted in July 1970. The duo soon disbanded due to clashes over personal issues. In 1971, he signed a solo recording contract with Family Productions and released his first solo album, Cold Spring Harbor. However, the album was a technical disappointment as it was mastered at too high a speed. A few years later, Columbia Records released a remastered version of the album, with certain songs re-orchestrated or shortened. Soon after, he went from West Coast to Los Angeles due to a contractual dispute and played piano at the Executive Room Piano Bar in Wilshire Boulevard under the name Bill Martin. During this time, he composed his signature hit, Piano Man. In 1972, WMMR-FM, a radio station of Philadelphia, started playing his live concert recording, Captain Jack, which soon became a chartbuster on the East Coast. After hearing the song, the executives of Columbia Records offered him a recording contract. He recorded with Columbia Records for three years before returning to New York. In 1973, he recorded the album Piano Man with Columbia Records in Los Angeles. It later became his first top 20 single and first gold album. In 1974, he recorded Street Life Serenade with Columbia Records in Los Angeles. The Entertainer proved to be a brilliant track in the album. He garnered much recognition because of the track The Entertainer. In 1976, he came back to New York and assembled a new band, incorporating musicians of his own choice. In the same year, he embarked on his first concert tour. In 1977, he collaborated with producer Phil Ramone to release The Stranger. It became a big hit and emerged as Columbia Records' biggest selling album at the time. In 1978, he released his second album, 52nd Street, which was labeled as more sophisticated and jazzy. It is considered one of the greatest albums of all time. In 1979, he traveled to Cuba to participate in a three-day event called the Havana Jam Festival at the Karl Marx Theater. In 1980, he released Glass Houses, which acquired the topmost position on the Billboard album chart and stayed there for six consecutive weeks. In 1981, he came up with an album titled Songs in the Attic. The album housed live performances of his not-so-popular songs composed at the beginning of his career. The album introduced his fans to many of his earlier compositions. In 1982, he recorded The Nylon Curtain with producer Phil Ramone. Thereafter, he embarked on a tour to promote his album. The Nylon Curtain proved to be one of his most ambitious albums. In 1983, he recorded an album titled The Innocent Man. The album, which gave him his second Billboard hit, was a tribute to the popular American music of his teenage years. 
In the same year, Columbia Records re-released his first album, Cold Spring Harbor. In 1985, he came up with Greatest Hits Volume 1 and 2. It proved to be a highly successful album and was claimed to be the third most selling album in American history by Recording Industry Association of America. In 1986, his tenth studio album, The Bridge, was released. The album was a collaboration between Billy, Ray Charles, Cindy Lauper, and Steve Winwood. It yielded successful singles, such as Matter of Trust and A Modern Woman. In 1987, he became the first American rock star to perform in the Soviet Union after the fall of the Berlin Wall. He also performed in Moscow, Leningrad, and Tbilisi. His live album named K-O-H-U-E-P-T was released in October that year. In 1989, he released Storm Front with producer Mick Jones. Stormfront, Billy Joel's 11th studio album, housed the popular single We Didn't Start the Fire. In 1993, he released River of Dreams which was his last pop album. In the same year, he joined a star cast for a performance to benefit an AIDS project in Los Angeles. In 1997, he released Greatest Hits Volume 3. It included his two famous singles, To Make You Feel My Love, and Hey Girl. In 2001, he released Fantasies and Delusions which was a collection of his classical compositions on the piano. It was well received by the audience and became one of his most successful projects. On January 7, 2006, he went on a musical expedition across the United States and performed in 12 sold-out shows at Madison Square Garden in New York City. In the same year, Columbia Records came out with 12 Gardens Live, which was a compilation of his songs from the Madison Square Garden concert. In July, he performed in a free concert in Rome as part of his European tour. On February 4, 2007, he performed the national anthem at Super Bowl 41. In the same year, Columbia Records released All My Life, which was his first new pop song since 1993. In 2011, his albums Cold Spring Harbor and Piano Man were re-released by California Records. The albums included many previously unavailable studio tracks and live performances. Joel played the first concert at the newly renovated Nassau Coliseum in April 2017. He announced the first ever concert at a baseball stadium at Camden Yards in 2019. On January 26, 2008, he performed with the Philadelphia Orchestra and premiered his new classical composition, Waltz No. 2, to celebrate the 151st anniversary of Academy of Music. In 1970, Billy tried taking his own life by drinking furniture polish. After recovering at a hospital, he said, I drank furniture polish. It looked tastier than bleach. On September 5, 1973, he married Elizabeth Weber Small, ex-wife of his former music partner John Small with whom he had formed the duo, Attila. Elizabeth and Billy divorced on July 20, 1982. On March 23, 1985, he married Christy Brinkley, an American model, with whom he had a daughter named Alexa Ray Joel. Her middle name, Ray, comes from Ray Charles, a music icon whom he idolized. The couple divorced on August 26, 1994, but remained on friendly terms. On October 2, 2004, he married American cookbook author Katie Lee who is 32 years younger than him. After being married for five years, the couple announced their separation on June 17, 2009. That's what really happened to him.